What up minions? Welcome back to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I make these awesome little bookcases. An awesome addition to any dungeons and decor, a bedroom, a tavern, or a dingy basement. So stick around and let's get cracking. I started by cutting quarter inch strips of white photo mat board that I had left over from a photo project. About four to five of these depending on the number of shelves. Next I cut five eighths inch strips of black construction paper. This would work with other colors of paper and then you wouldn't have to paint them later. I didn't have any different colored paper so this is what I used. Then apply glue with a glue stick or some white PVA. Do so liberally to ensure maximum coverage. Take your strips of mat board and lay them on the strips of paper and fold them over. Make sure they're smoothed out or it could create odd textures later on. You can see already how it looks like the pages of a book. Next, take some scissors or a hobby knife and cut the strips into randomly sized bits. If you want, choose two or three different sizes and cut equal amounts of them. 3 8 inch and 5 16 inch are good measurements for the sizes. Once you have a good pile of your tiny books, go ahead and glue them together. I just used some regular Elmer's glue, but I think Aileen's Tacky Glue would have been better here. You could pick up both from my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. At this point, you could leave some loose if you want for additional placement options. I chose to make all of mine into solid rows of books to populate the shelves. Now it's time to make our potions. Starting with some wooden beads that I got at Walmart, fairly inexpensive I might add, only two or three bucks for the whole container, and some toothpicks. I cut the sharp tips off the picks and jammed them into the holes. Certain there was an easier way to do this, since I split a few of the beads, I decided to cut away some of the wood from the toothpicks. This helped a little bit, but they were still difficult. Once you get the toothpick into the hole, cut it off so that there's just a little showing. Then it kind of looks like a stopper in the bottle after it's all painted up. Then just use some liquid CA glue, or plain super glue as it's typically called, and drip a little on the underside of the bottle. It's time to make some candlesticks. Here I've got some number six washers from my local Home Depot. I couldn't find anything smaller and these work but I would recommend trying to get them smaller than this for scale. Took some needle nose pliers and bent up some jewelry wire in the shape of a backwards P. I tried to keep the stems no bigger than the diameter of the ring of my washers. Then I cut up some bits of Q-tip. Just cut these up randomly. The more variation in length, the better in the coming steps. It really helps them look more realistic. The most annoying step of this whole build was trying to find a decent way to insert the wicks into the candles. I eventually settled on my newly acquired pin vise, which I will put a link to in the description below. This thing was awesome and did the job perfectly. My hands still cramped a bit, but in the end, it was far easier than the alternatives I had available. A Dremel would have made short work of these, but I lack the proper adapter for this size of drill bit. You don't have to go all the way through the Q-tip, you just need a cavity to stick some jewelry wire into. So get some super glue on the end, stick it into the hole on the candle, then cut off the excess. I used black wire here, but you could use any kind of wire for this. Wire from old headphones or steel wire would work just fine for any of it. Now it's time to rough up the washers so we can get paint and glue to stick to them. I did this quickly using some emery boards that I purchased from the dollar store. And then we can use a combination of gel super glue, liquid super glue, and baking soda to glue the candlestick handles to the bases. I used the gel to put the handles on and filled in the center of the base with baking soda and liquid super glue. 
and then sprinkled baking soda over the whole thing. It was probably a little overkill, but in the end, it worked out, so it's fine. You can see I did this whole process on baking parchment. The super glue barely stuck to it and made it really easy to lay these things flat to fill in the gap. Time for the shelves. Here I'm cutting up some 3 8 inch section of balsa that I got from Michaels. You can just as easily use popsicle sticks for this and still get great results. I've recently purchased a bunch of balsa on a whim and it turns out I really love the material, so I'll be making more things with it. Cut these into 2 inch strips. Each shelving unit will need 5 pieces. Now I used super glue gel here and later found that liquid kind of works better on balsa and it's a lot cleaner. You just have to hold the pieces together a little longer before they set up. You can even lay the pieces together first, then squirt the liquid super glue into the joint for a solid bond. I'm just eyeballing the measurements on these. I put the bottom shelf roughly 3 8 inch up from the bottom on both sides, and then about 3 quarters inch of space in between the two shelves using my book stacks for reference. Next, I took a piece of sheet balsa, just some scrap I had laying around. I laid the completing shelving unit on top, and then got the measurements to cut it out. Then I glued it to the back of the shelving unit. You could even use chipboard or cereal box cardboard for this part if you wanted to. For this next part, I decided to embellish the shelf just a bit by adding some stripping under the bottom shelf. This is just a really thin balsa dowel from the craft store, but matchsticks would be a perfect solution to this if you didn't have access to this material. From the same scrap sheet, I decided to cut wider strips for subsequent shelving units as the original strips I used weren't quite wide enough for my liking. These I cut to be the same width as popsicle sticks and it worked out for the better. And now we paint. I based the shelves in a burnt umber craft paint, slightly watered down, and I did about two or three coats per piece and allowed them to dry in between. While they dried, I prepped my candles and other pieces for painting. I tried to apply some white PVA glue to the candles to give them the appearance of dripping wax, but I couldn't quite get the consistency right, so I kind of gave up on that. And I could try something else in the future, but for now I just wanted to get these done. I painted each section of books with a combination of brown, green, blue, and red. I even tried violet on one set, but didn't really care for it. Even so, I decided to leave it. I was going for the look of old leather, so the muted colors really worked for me. One thing that I did later after filming was to stipple gold paint on the spines of the books to look like titles, uh, like uh, gold leaf writing. Once the shelves were dry, I dry brushed a Craftsmart suede onto them. This color combination is amazing and looks like very old aged wood. I decided to make my potions look like the kind you'd see in video games. I'm a huge fan of Skyrim and used the potion colors from the game. Red for health, blue for mana, and green for stamina. Next, I painted the candlestick bases black and dry brushed a gunmetal gray onto them. Then I hit all the candles and potions with a homemade sepia wash. Lastly, for the potions, I brushed on some clear gloss nail polish to give the bottles some shine. Here, I'm cutting some strips of parchment colored paper about a half inch wide for some scrolls. 
and I'm rolling them around a toothpick to get them started, and it really helps when you're trying to roll them smaller after. I cut some small details into the edges of the scrolls with my hobby knife. It was really tedious, but it gave the scrolls a really worn appearance, and I was very happy with that. The next step was to tie some craft string around the scrolls, completely optional and monotonous, but every bit of detail helps. A small drop of super glue helps ensure the strings don't go anywhere. Here I took some of the extra loose candles I had and glued them together in sets of three at varying heights for a realistic look. I'm very happy with the way these turned out. And now we can start assembling our shelves. I tried to randomize the placement as much as possible so that the shelves wouldn't look too similar. Variation is key to realism in my opinion. It tricks the senses more. mounted the completed bookcases on some strips of plastic scrap from a blister pack. I always save large flat pieces of plastic for things like windows, bases, and mirrors. This worked out very well and added stability to the pieces. The very last step in the process was to take some pieces of used dryer sheet and pull it apart by hand to use for spider webs. I started off attaching the material to the shelves using white PVA glue dabbed on with a paintbrush but eventually switched to spray glue because it was easier and the glue was tackier, allowing me to pull web across the piece. The spray glue leaves a bit of a shiny finish on the wood, which you can fix later using some matte spray lacquer. That's it. You can see here how, uh, how nice these look together. Fully assembled, they look amazing on the table, and they just about match up with the scale of a miniature. As you can see, these were fairly intricate and detailed, not very different from me or the channel. But risks are the cornerstone of this craft. The only way that I get results I enjoy by taking those risks. As I hope I've conveyed thus far, nothing I do is without its flaws. Every day I watch YouTube videos by creators whose content I consider to be far superior to mine. And this doesn't stop me from trying or putting my stuff out there for you all to enjoy. Every time I make a mistake or try something new that doesn't work out as an opportunity for me to grow not only as a content creator, but as an artist and a human being. In that vein, I'd love to see your creation. All you have to do is use the hashtag TheDungeonMaster on Instagram. If you've been inspired to make something you've seen here, or your own creations, I'll put them in an upcoming video. If you love what I'm making and want this channel to continue, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you get early access to weekly videos, exclusive content, and polls. This week, for the first time on the channel, I'm hosting a giveaway on my Patreon page. I'm going to give away four of the shells you saw me make in this video to a lucky winner. To participate, just head over to my Patreon page and leave a comment on the post associated with this video. And next week, I'll announce the winner. And if you're looking to help out the channel in other ways, use the Amazon affiliate link in the description. You shop as normal, and I get a small commission. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like button down there. 
If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you. What kinds of cool dungeon adornments have you made? Have you taken risks with the craft? Let me know in the comments. That's it. Now go make stuff. See ya. Bye for now.